bring more girls in The skin and creators like the moon The moon we love like a brother While it glows through the room Dancing around our rights we own Dancing around our rights we own Oh, even the comet doubts They'll hear the rights we own I am not just a woman from Saudi Arabia. I am the person of no fear. I'm a person who don't believe in failure. Since its inception in 1932, Saudi Arabia has been driven by Islam. Eventually, Islam became embedded within the culture. Saudi women have had to bear the burden of a strict culture for many years. For instance, the rights to drive a car and participate in politics are still limited. Women in many of transitional societies or traditional societies are still suffering from constraining situation. When these women find themselves in a society that is open, and give them more options, they make best use of it. They can actualize their dreams. Saudi women still must suffer through cultural stereotypes internationally, such as being viewed as hopeless, powerless, and more recently, as terrorists. Faryal Mazri is a great example. She is the first Saudi American woman to run for a political office in US history. She was born in Mecca in western Saudi Arabia. At age nine, her family sent her to Egypt to pursue an education because women were not permitted to go to school at the time in Saudi. Faryal eventually graduated from the University of Cairo with a journalism degree. She met her husband there and they moved to California in 1979. Now Faryal teaches American history at Grover Cleveland High School in Reseda, California. My political journey started actually because of my son went to Iraq. I was deployed with the army in the beginning of the war. So I was demonstrating against the, the war. And then I decided to join the Democratic Party because I felt, unfortunately, America leading the world by default but doesn't know anything about the world is leading. So I joined the Democratic Party. And joining it, people like what I stand for. And before I know it, they asked me to run for the state assembly. And uh, I was laughing because, uh, you know, and my husband remembered that they asked me, why are you laughing? I say, they asked me to run for state assembly. He said, do you know what you're running for? I say, no, but who cares? I'm going to learn. She suffered financial difficulties, but that didn't stop her from running her first campaign. Her opponent had nearly $6 million to spend in an atmosphere still reeling from the tragedy of 9-11. Now, I have some people sending email, we're not going to vote for her because she's Saudi, she's a terrorist, and, and all this baloney. But I never let that thing affect me. And I remember I was walking the precinct. So I knocked the door, and this woman came out. And I say, hi, I'm Friel Masri, and I'm asking you for your vote. And she looked at me, she said, yes, I know you, I heard you talking. And suddenly, I was shocked. She started shouting at me. You are a terrorist, you are, you're going to get your mullah to come and kill me. You are this and that and start shouting and I was like stunned. So I stood for half an hour and then I said, I'm sorry, I'm dizzy, I have to go. The next day I went to the office and I find my manager. He said, you know who's calling you? He said, the lady, she talked to you last night. She's calling to apologize. I was happy because it really restored my, my confidence in people that because I validate her anger, I think she went back to see that I wasn't what she expected. You have also some biases and prejudices common in your host country. But when you help shatter these stereotypes, then many are going to welcome you. Sometimes even they may help you. Actually, a lot of people stood for me. And I think they find in my attitude something refreshing and new. They couldn't believe that I have the ability to meet all the challenges and not afraid, and also to have my identity. I didn't hide my name. I didn't hide who I am. 
I'm very proud of my religion, my background, and I really challenge the stereotype and challenge the American understanding of the Middle East and, and Saudi women. In her third campaign in 2008, Ferial was close from winning a California State Assembly seat. Although she came up short, her victory resounded not only in America, but also in Saudi Arabia. I was the first Saudi woman to be in the cover of the magazine without a veil. I was also uh, an example for a lot of women when they asking for the right to vote, because being in the election, that encouraged a lot of them. And that was very exciting for me to see that my campaign and what I did here have its impact even in Saudi Arabia. And every time people remind me that we're always, we're proud of you, you did something is great and Growing up in Saudi, in my head, it was like, I can't sing. Like, this isn't even a dream. Welcome to the circus, moving with a purpose, never going back. Shooting up the same, fake it till you make it, never going back. In places like Saudi Arabia, I think the problem is that religion and culture have become so intertwined. If you do something that is culturally different, if you sing or if anything that's culturally different, that becomes forbidden. It's a special challenge because they have to jump several hurdles culturally. They have to convince their own community, their own families that this is okay, don't worry, I'm not gonna like dishonor our family. Rotana was born and raised in Dahran in eastern Saudi Arabia. After college, she pursued the lifestyle that was expected of her. I was just doing amazing at my job, but it was so unfulfilled, and I couldn't get rid of that feeling. Until one trip to Boston, where she had a fateful encounter that changed her life. I remember we were driving around one night and we had heard on the radio an announcement of a, a talent agency holding an open casting call. I was like, I'm going to go. The next morning, I went to this place where there was all these professional actors and actresses and singers and they had their professional head shots and I was there with my Facebook photo and my resume. So lady that owned the agency chose me and this one other kid. She asked me if I could do anything other than act and I told her I could sing. So I sang her Come Together by the Beatles but in a very like sad way. And she cried. After that trip I started hearing an inner voice and a gut feeling that was just saying maybe you should try music but there were so many opinions around me. Most of them were like, okay, Tade, I mean, no. In 2013, dozens of Saudi women decided together to defy a century-old ban on women driving cars. They drove in many cities across the country. In a show of support for those women, Rotana sang her cover of Lord's song, Team, the chorus says, we live in cities that you'll never see on screens. And I heard that and I was like, ah, oh, that's Saudi. We really do. We live in a, a place where the world very rarely sees it on TV or reported on in the media as it actually is. We live in cities you'll never see on screens. Not very pretty, but we sure know how to drive free. The video went viral within weeks and launched Rotana into the media spotlight. The song was applauded and reviewed on BBC and the LA Weekly, among others. But not all reviews were positive.
Her own people in Saudi Arabia vilified her for not fitting into the very stereotype she was trying to escape. Not everyone has accepted me, but to me these negative comments are just people being very, very fearful and uncomfortable with somebody that is not exactly what their belief system is. So I don't look at them as someone that's really angry and that hates me and really wants me to die. I'm sure the women who are not following the canon law go through a lot of challenges to not alienate yourself from your community of origin, from your family, friends, relatives, and all that. Her biggest challenges haven't come from others, but from within herself. I think the challenge in general with me being Saudi yet wanting to build this identity of my own is just that constant push and pull and I'm so scared of losing my roots because I don't want to. I love Saudi Arabia, I love my values that come out of there but I'm also Ritana. A lot of times I'm just like why am I doing this? Why? I'm so tired I, and, I, and I feel lost and sometimes I, and I feel alone. But I always come back to this journey being bigger than me. For decades, Women's roles in Saudi Arabia have gone through a slow wave of ideological change. From opening girls schools in the 1960s to allowing women to run and vote for municipal seats in 2015, Saudi Arabia is bracing for gradual and cautious change. The women in Saudi Arabia kept the culture with their strengths. And that is a very unique and very strange to a lot of people because everybody uh, to be free and independent, you follow the European style. But women in Saudi Arabia, they try to have the depths of culture and at the same time modernity. So I really do think that there is an artistic renaissance that is happening in Saudi Arabia right now. There's a huge wave of musicians and actors and actresses and filmmakers. All of these things are definitely allowing for more of an acceptance to all these different career paths. I, I expect them to be more courageous, to get together, to network, to get organized, and to create a movement. I expect, and I'm almost sure, this is going to happen sooner or later. Uh,